they are tied for second place. The Patriots are coming off a loss to the Blue Jays, but they did beat the Demons about a month ago. The rematch is tonight at the Olsen Gym. And Century uh, broke out to an early lead in this one on their home court. In need of a side out, though, the Demons turn to Taylor Anderson. She gets that kill, little soft roll off her palm. But after a long rally here, Century would turn to their kill leader. That's Eden Fridley. She goes up high and hammers it down to the floor, right down the line. That kind of turns the tide for the uh, Patriots who started to build a lead. Century would work middle here. That's where Erica Lee is. She puts it down. Century gets the win in straight sets. The final here, three to nothing. Elsewhere in the WDA, it was Jamestown over Mandan and St. Mary's beats Watford City three to nothing. Out in Dickinson, it's a double counter, but the Midgets beat Legacy. Trinity, number one ranked team in Class B, topping Beach tonight. It was uh, Sen Center Stanton over Standing Rock. Washburn such out, uh, such out, dear Garrison. And it was Grant County in five over Glen Allen Hebron. In football, Eagle Butte over Standing Rock 26 to eight. About a decade after the Stantons won a bunch of football games at Baker, the Schillingers came along and the winning continued. Here's the second segment of a three-part series by Jeff Roberts. Montana is known as the Treasure State, and the Schillinger name is like gold. From Jim and Don to Jason Shan, the Schillinger family shaped many lives throughout Montana. Jim Stanton, of course, hired me in uh, 1982 here. They had an opening here. And he asked me if I was interested in going into uh, administration and being head football, and that's how we all got started. It started a 29-year stretch that helped earn Don a place in the Montana Coaches Hall of Fame. His 318 career wins, spanning over 37 years, is second all-time in the state. I think he took so many average players and just made them really good players that maybe weren't they weren't great football players, but it was about the team. And I think those guys were so inspired to, to do well for the team. And I think that's what the foundation happened for many years in Baker, you know. The football gene in Jim and Don Schillinger was passed down to the next generation. After winning three titles in Baker in the early 2000s, Shan Schillinger had a Hall of Fame career for the Montana Grizzlies. That led to a four-year stint in the NFL. Well, I think Shan just got it from the beginning, and obviously he grew up, uh, you know, with a family that uh, that helped mold that thinking, and with an uncle and grandparents that helped mold that thinking. So he had all the foundation to do really well. You know, I remember all the brothers came out and watched me play. Uh, the Stanton brothers come watch play, and it just goes to show you there's many, many levels to this relationship, and um, it's obviously one that uh, that means a lot to us. That relationship with the Stantons helped Shan land a role coaching the receivers at Dickinson State in 2013. Ten years later, he earned his first head coaching gig at the University of Mary. I, I think they also did very well there, seeing his background and his, and his character and his personality. They also had a great hire, and I hope that uh, he'll get a, a few years to be able to show what he can do. There's been no shortage of guidance for Shan. As a player at each level, to coaching in the Power Five, He's bringing every stop with him up to Bismarck. I've been around so many for great coaches, and wherever I've been, whoever I've worked for or played for, that's somewhere there at the top of the list of most wins, wherever they've been. So try to take a little bit from each of them, kind of put my own twist on it. Hopefully, with time, we can kind of see a good product that we want to put on the field. Tomorrow, Jeff wraps up his series by exploring the connection between the two.